That's just disturbing. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that the um, the uh, mixer is detachable and uh, can be replaced with other things that move around. Ooh, it's seven o'clock in the morning. Ooh. <laughs> Enjoy your morning snack, afternoon tea. <laughs> yeah, breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um. Well, we're just gonna add a whole another level of ill to this. Okay, turn dead bodies into beads. Mm hmm. Yeah. Now I make jewelry, but I haven't actually heard of this one, so this was kind of a bit of a. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> the intense grief that Kim, I'll say Il Nam, has felt every day since his father died 27 years ago led to a startling decision. He dug up the grave, cremated his father's bones, and paid $870 to have the ashes transformed into gem-like beads. Kim is not alone in his desire to keep the loved one close, even in death. Changes in traditional South Korean beliefs about cherishing ancestors and a huge increase in cremation have led to a handful of niche businesses that cater to those who see honouring an urn filled with ashes as an imperfect way of mourning. Whenever I look at these beads, I consider them to be my father, and I remember the good old days with him. A grey-haired Kim, 69... That's an unfortunate number. Uh, told the Associated Press in an interview. As a little boy, I often fell asleep while being hugged by my father, he said, sobbing and gazing at the blue-green beads, which sit on a silk cloth in a ceramic pot on a table. A decade ago, six out of every ten South Koreans who died were buried, a practice in line with traditional Confucian instructions to respect dead ancestors and visit their graves regularly. Since then, there has been a big shift in South Korean thinking about the handling of the deceased, in part officials say because of Western influence and a strong government push for citizens of the small, densely populated country to consider cremation as a way to save space. The government cremation campaign included press states, statements, pamphlets and radio broadcasts. Wow, okay. Uh, a law passed in 2000 requires anyone burying their dead after 2000 to remove the grave after 60 years after burial. What? Wow. Wow. Okay, so yeah. anyway, basically they just, you know, like the whole creating diamonds thing, but they're like creating beads. So, yeah. Not the strangest thing I've heard of, you know, people doing with people's asses, but well, actually I, I think it's kind of cool. I wouldn't mind being turned into diamonds. I reckon that'd be kind of cool. Can't afford it. May as well be one. What was that? said, <laughs> if you can't afford them, may as well be one. Exactly. But 60 years after burial, they're supposed to remove the grave. What do they do with it? Ah, I stick it in a little red wagon and drag it behind you. <laughs> I mean, where is it supposed to go? What are you supposed to do with the remains? I guess they maybe they cremate it anyway? I don't think so. I don't know. But I, I don't know either. I mean... <laughs> I hate when articles do that because you know there has to be a logical answer behind it, but they don't tell you in the article. Well, it might be there, but I'm not reading at all. Um, Mostly I'm, because there's a lot of names that sound like you're hawking up something out of your lungs to say. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm also sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, so we have uh, mummies from Egypt, we have the terracotta soldiers... We have all these amazing things from all these ancient cultures. And what on earth are the archaeologists going to be lifting up out of this era when they're doing that? 
a bunch of like little bitty boxes with urns and beads and diamonds and well, if necklaces and if they're digging up these graves at sixty years, that means there'll be no history left for anyone to find. Well, I mean, to to an extent, I agree with it because as the population continues to grow we are running out of space especially in you know smaller areas like this mm-hmm. but i mean i guess out of all the things they could be doing this isn't so bad well i mean i would rather be a diamond you know that you could either make it a ring or a pendant or a pair of earrings or just keep it you know, make a really big one and, like, keep it on a mantle. You know? There are some people um, that put uh, their the ashes of their loved ones in uh, with a, a se- like, a, a tree seed. Mm-hmm. And as they, as the tree grows, it takes in the nutrients and all this. And basically, they become a tree in a weird way. So you're always kind of part of that tree. Yeah, but trees get sick and trees die. True, but it's a way to give back to the environment. It's a way to, you know, have something really pretty because you could also do like a rose bush or, you know, some kind of their favorite flower, you know, things like that. You know, they could be a part of, especially if they liked gardening, you know, granted, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this if they were like gardening food. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm, let's eat granddad no no <laughs> mm, apple so I don't know I mean what else have we got we've got the um, the people that put the ashes in a bullet Mm-hmm. which is really funny because um, Robin told me about that uh, forever ago and we couldn't read it because the other show got it mm-hmm <laughs> we love you, and, Rose. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Even though you steal our stories. But anyway. <laughs> uh, but when we were talking, I said, they must be from the South. They have to be. And she goes through and reads it, and she goes, yep, they're from Alabama. I was like, yes! <laughs> we knew it. Because how redneck do you have to be for that one to make sense? Oh, I'm, I'm wondering at how... That lovely police officer that took the deer off your hands. I'm wondering how his, you know, family members are preserved. You don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Yeah, it's a bit creepy. A little bit. So, I don't know. I mean, I want to be a diamond. I want to be a dirty, great, big diamond. And, you know, that way, either I can be really useful as a paperweight... Or I can just be something really pretty on the mantle. Well, that means you're going to have to gain a lot more weight if you want to be a really big diamond, dear. I know. I'm working on it. I'm doing as much sitting on my ass as I can. Trust me. Okay, when there is a man whose scrotum weighs more than you... <laughs> I would I would even recommend coming to America, but you can't eat half of the things we have anyway, so I know. Ugh. Such a pain. Um Do we have any more stories? I think we do. Uh one more. Except Robin keeps telling me to uh read one story and I keep forgetting it, so I'm going to I'm going to skip the story. Uh, have you seen the uh, story online about the old woman that holds up the car? Uh, refresh my memory. Okay. So, uh, there is this old woman. She's doing grocery shopping. She goes back to her car, and she sees four boys sitting in her car. She drops her groceries, pulls out a gun, points it at the boys and says, I have a gun, I'm not afraid to use it, get out of the car. Well, without further ado, they jump out of the car and run like hell 
<laughs> the woman is so shaken up she can't get her key into the ignition, and then a little while later she finds out why, as she looks about four spaces down to see her car. <laughs> she gets into her car. She goes to the police station to report what has happened. Standing at the other end of the counter are the four boys that she had just held up, reporting being held up by a woman described as being like five nothing, <laughs> white hair, little bitty, this little bitty grandmother. And um, the police chief couldn't stop laughing. He, like, he was <laughs> dying laughing. And he just dismissed the whole thing. So the moral of the story is if you're going to have it if you're going to have a senior moment, make it a make it a big one. Uh huh. Definitely. Mm. I don't That's think the kind could... of old woman I wanna be when I grow up. I don't think he could top that. No. I mean there was that lady in the UK that saw the burglary happening and she like laid into the guys with her handbag. And they're like, oh, my God, and ran away. There's one story I heard about this woman. She saw a um, a dog attacking. Like It was a big dog versus a little dog, and the little dog was the old woman's. And she got down on all fours and bit the big dog. <laughs> okay. It ran away. She was protecting her little dog. She must then, really, really have some good denture grip. Yes. <laughs> Either that or the dog ran off with her teeth. We're not sure. Yeah, they didn't put that in the story. No. And let's see. Then there's one where this guy broke into this woman's house. He had a knife. And he caught her in the kitchen. And she looked at him, looked at the knife and said, you think that's a knife? Reached behind her, pulled out this butcher knife and said, no. This is a knife, honey. <laughs> <laughs> now, was she Australian? I don't know. It's been forever since I've read that story. I don't know. Maybe she'd been like what 